Hi everyone, I'm Boris Jarry, pilot at Jetpack Aviation, and this is Alex Bock, engineer and also pilot at Jetpack Aviation. We're super excited to announce our new technical innovations as well as our safety features on the new JB11 Jetpack. JB10 was amazing, but the JB11 will blow your mind. Awesome introduction, thanks guys. Hi everyone, David Maimon's my name, Jetpack Aviation CEO. Um, one piece of really good news that we haven't told you guys about yet is that this JB11 will become the first ever jetpack to be officially categorized in the experimental category by the FAA in America. This is the, the, this is the piece of paper that we have. So our N number, our registration number, just like every uh, certified aircraft has, will be November 42, Juliet Papa. We'll be able to proudly uh, place that on the back of the, the fuel tank and fly with that. And it gives us a whole range of options that we didn't have before in the, um, in the ultralight, in the part 103 category, in terms of the length of time that we can fly, the amount of weight that we can carry, the speed, etc. So it's taken a few years, but it's, it's really done. It's great, great to get here. So while, while I've got you, I just want to talk a little bit more about JB11 because we're really, really excited about this machine. The first thing I want to talk about is redundancy. If one of these engines goes out, the pilot barely even notices it. We're going to show you a little video. So this is showing the test uh, on our tether line here in Southern California, and the engine is about to fail. I'm talking to the computer engineer, and there, it's failed there. So you can see a little bit of lateral shift. Remember that the, the tether line is actually not helping me at all. It actually makes it more difficult. I'm not hanging from the tether. I'm pushing up. I'm thrusting up against the tether. Okay, and this is a different view. You can see the engine on the left-hand side has failed. You can see the smoke clearly coming out of that. Now, I'm still going up and down. I've still got enough thrust to climb uh, to control lat both laterally and in pitch. And remember, if the engine on the other side now failed, our thrust augmentation system would just balance out the ship again. Okay, so I, I could go from side to side and there'd be no problem at all. Basically, the pilot might feel like a little wiggle like this, and then our MCU, our master control unit, automatically takes over the thrust of the other engines and balances the machine. The pilot doesn't need to do anything. The pilot just keeps flying. They'll see a master alert here, so they'll know what's happened and they'll know what engine's gone out, and they'll probably decide to come down and land. That would be a sensible thing. There's actually four levels of redundancy in this. For example, just with the throttle, okay, there are two encoders in here, digital encoders, and there is one analog encoder and what that does is send wires, th there's three physical wires going to the MCU, the, the, the control units, and then we also have a wireless backup. So, I mean, that's, that's awesome. If this whole handle was to fall off, uh, which is not going to happen, there would still be a wireless backup. In the MCU, we have a triple layer computer system there. So we have master slave and we have monitoring between the two. Even if one system was, even if one side was to completely fry and blow up, the other side automatically takes over and manages all of the engines. And then on the, on the battery system, we have four batteries. The, system, the whole machine can run on one of those batteries and it cross feeds from, from side to side. I mean, it's aviation quality. We're an aviation company. That's what you would expect. You know, our whole history for the last 12 years has been based on building aviation products. Okay, so what else can I tell you about the JB11? Um, okay, in terms of fuel pump, we have multiple redundancy on the fuel pump. If one of the fuel pumps go out, the others just keep going. All right, let me take you through the display. This is a whole new display system. All right, on the right-hand side, I see all of the details that you can imagine for each of the engines. So I can see the EGT, which is the exhaust gas temperature. I can see the battery voltages. I can see whether the ECU is functioning or, or the master control unit, the MCU. I can see whether the, battery, whether the engines are in sync or not. So I can see that for each one, of the, uh, each one of the engines. But typically, when you're flying a jetpack, you don't need to see that kind of level of information. So what we're doing and what the electrical engineers and computer engineers here did is on the left hand side, what we have is what's called a master cautionary alarm. If there is a problem, first of all, I could get an amber alert and then it will go down into detail. It will actually tell me what's wrong. OK, an amber alert, which is sort of, you know, a yellow color. It says there's something which is not absolutely flight critical, but it could become flight critical. So you should be aware of it. And then we have a red alert which means you should, you should land immediately. And again, it will tell me what that, uh, what that is. 
In addition on this panel, I've got uh, full GPS. We have radar altimeter, which gives me down to an inch in, uh, in accuracy. So even if I'm at 100 feet, it tells me within an e inch high, how high I am above the ground. This is not barometric pressure or some kind of altimeter. It literally is sending a radar signal down to the ground. So as I chain, move from a river to a, to a tree or to a whatever, it's actually measuring exactly how high, high I am above the ground. And obviously all of the normal stuff is, you know, such as speed and what have you, that can also be transmitted to a heads up display. Okay, what else do we have? Ah, the red button here is the pilot manual override for the parachute. So the pilot can actually fire the low-level parachute that we've that we're built at any time here, or our IMU system will fire it for them if the, if the jetpack ever gets out of uh, flight, normal flight parameters. Okay, so if it has an excessive roll, excessive um, uh, banking rate, or an excessive pitch rate, it fires the parachute uh, instantly. Let me talk for a moment about the parachute. Building a parachute system that will deploy at low level, okay, and also at high speed or low speed is incredibly difficult. You can imagine a parachute that is great for high speed. It has to dis deploy slowly so it doesn't rip itself apart. A parachute that deploys at low speed or low altitude actually has to open like a bomb really, really immediately. So you know, bridging those two needs is incredibly difficult and then also building it in a pack size that can fit on a, on a jet pack. That's, uh, that's what we're doing. Okay, what else can I tell you about this? All right, I think, I mean, one of the most incredible things for me generally about jet packs, uh, you know, as opposed to any other kind of VTOL machine, uh, is that you can walk around. You know, I can do what I want. I can walk up to somebody, I can say hello, I can talk to them, you know, I can go back and I can sit down. I can walk probably, I don't know, I can walk half a mile in this thing without any problems and then I can take off where I want. There are no FOD issues. FOD stands for foreign object debris, you know, sand and dust, okay? Some machines, you know, they, you know, even large ones like helicopters or other ones that you might see flying around, you know, they actually have to fly from a grate or from a structure because they're worried about the FOD that might come from the, the ground and go back into the engines and also the heat that that creates. No such problem with this. We can take off exactly where we want. The other thing is, it's stabilized. So this is fully stabilized. If I'm flying along and I have a medical emergency, I get a cramp or you know, I, lose, I lose control of one of my legs or God forbid, something like that happens, this machine keeps flying and it's balanced. Okay? If you have a machine that relies on your own performance, maybe as, a, as an athlete or your own balance or something like that, it would be a catastrophic failure. One of the fantastic uh, things about this machine is it has so much power because we've completely retuned the way these engines work that, I mean, this, this thing can lift. It's, it's not, you don't just have to be like a short guy to fly with this. You can be a tall guy, woman, doesn't matter, heavy, 260 pounds. What's that? Like uh, 110, 120 kilos. This thing will lift you. I mean, it's, it's got so much power. So it'll fly anybody. You know, you don't, you don't need to be a jockey. Frankly, flying it, you feel the difference between this and the JB-10 and the JB-9. When you nail the throttle, this thing punches into the sky. I mean, it's, it's as close to being Superman as you can possibly feel. It's, it's incredible. Like the ground is whoosh like this. Anyway, that's, um, I think you can tell we're kind of excited here about JB-11 and, um, you know, we'll be telling you guys lots more about it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Really, the JB-11 is just absolutely awesome. We're yeah. super excited yeah. about it. Alex even wants to fly and is flying Ooh. now. We've converted the engineer. <laughs> Boris, well, he'll fly anything. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, hope to see you in Cannes, in France, uh, in a few weeks' time. Red Bull Air Race. It'll be super, super fun. Yeah. Prochain event, France. Donc, je compte sur vous, tous les Français. Venez nous voir. Ça va être juste un truc de dingue. Make sure you subscribe right here. Yeah.